Good evening, Dr. Soloway again with Evening Rounds. Great cases from the clinic of Dr. Stephen Soloway, Arthritis and Rheumatology Associates of South Jersey, Vineland, New Jersey, 08360. Phone number 856-794-9090. Although I think most of the people watching probably already know me. This will be another dermatology case. The last case that I presented was palpable purpura with a nice discussion, I hope, or at least I hope you guys found it to be a helpful discussion. This was a patient that I saw in the hospital again this evening to round out a very exciting day. All my days are filled with exciting, interesting cases, uh, things that other people have never heard of and things that are common in my field. So this is a patient who I came to see who's been in the hospital almost one month. And I have to be honest, it's a very interesting case. It's not worthy of publication because it's not particularly rare, but I will say it's definitely rare enough for any um, student watching this, and it's very interesting for any patient watching this. So what you see in the photograph is called salt and, paper, salt and pepper skin. The salt and pepper skin seen in the photographs that I posted on Facebook, uh, Steve Soloway. This salt and pepper skin is classic of progressive systemic sclerosis. The patient did in fact have a uh, hidebound skin with proximal involvement in addition to the face. As I'm sure you all know that the face is a neutral area and therefore does not count towards the diagnosis. Now, because I was on rounds at the hospital, I did not have my ophthalmoscope and I did not do Nelfold capillary bed analysis, which we should all be doing. If you're not doing this, then you didn't study hard enough and you need to learn. So, um, just at a glance, I can look at this patient, look at their face, look at their um, salt and pepper skin with proximal skin changes, and I knew immediately this patient um, had scleroderma or PSS, progressive systemic sclerosis. I did not know if they had an overlap of lupus or myositis or Sjogren's, but what I did know is that they were very short of breath. And I know they came into the hospital approximately, I think it was three weeks ago, and the patient was in um, their 60s. And the patient was an African-American female, and she was with her family. She was sleeping when I arrived. So a couple of things. One, if you should see skin like this, you need to examine all the skin. And, excuse me, you need to do a comprehensive history and physical. And of course, in scleroderma, you're going to be asking about swallowing solid foods, not liquids, due to uh, muscle weakness, which would prevent the swallowing of solid foods and not liquids. You're going to be asking about muscle weakness, particularly proximal muscle weakness. Oh, you'll be asking about Raynaud's and digital infarcts. I'm sorry, I keep getting interrupted here. Uh, so you'll be asking about Raynaud's, digital infarcts. You'll be looking for telangiectasias. You'll be looking for other progressive skin changes. You can expect shortness of breath. If somebody has a um, centromere antibody, they have a high incidence of pulmonary artery hypertension. Fortunately, this is treatable now. However, if they have an anti-topoisomerase antibody, they have a high risk of interstitial lung disease. And frankly, we don't have a good treatment for this. If it's caught very early and the bronchoscopy shows inflammation, you can use cytoxans or what's also called cyclophosphamide. And generally the patients will respond, but they will continue to progress. So we don't have a good treatment, and this is the leading, leading cause of death in scleroderma. Uh, the patients are often on uh, 
heart lung transplant lists. They often have ambulatory oxygen, but generally they, they don't do well. They do not have a comfortable life. Um, so this patient was in fact uh, short of breath, but the patient was admitted with um, renal failure. And what's interesting, the patient had renal failure. It was acute and there were no other um, no other potential causes for the renal failure. So my summation is that this is one of the few cases of um, non, let me get this right, non-uremic, no, I'm sorry, normotensive scleroderma hypertensive renal crisis. I'll say that again. Normotensive, so normal blood pressure, scleroderma, renal crisis. Most of the time it is simply hypertensive renal crisis and scleroderma. However, the treatment for this patient upon admission when their kidney function was normal probably should have included empiric ACE inhibitors. And as soon as the BUN and creatinine started to rise, ACE inhibitors should have been maximized. In fact, I've been involved in cases where captopril has been required in as high as 800 milligrams. And in fact, patients tolerate it, they do well, they don't get a cough, and it is life-saving, and I've seen this numerous times, if not dozens of times, in my humble little office practice in South Jersey, where people come from all over the world for the finest treatment. Okay, so you learned a little bit about scleroderma. You see a couple of pictures. I'm sure you'll have questions. I'm happy to take questions. There is um, so much more to know about scleroderma. It's diagnosis, treatment, differential diagnosis. But if you want world-class care, in a boutique environment, go no further than South Jersey. We have the best center for the treatment and diagnosis of arthritic conditions anywhere on the planet. Have a great night. Look forward to see you soon.